to my Friday sews. It is now, I think, episode 12. So I'm just doing a little intro now to tell you about what you're going to see in this video. I've actually managed to make a, a few things this week and I do a, a Mandy Shaw unboxing. It's the final uh, month of the Secret Society and I'm going to be starting a new one in June, which I've already signed up for. So I think... Um, that's just a little bit of an overview. There might be more things I can't quite remember. So I'm just going to send you over to my video. I hope you enjoy it. Please excuse the heavy breathing in the background if you hear it. I'm a little unfit because this is the first exercise I've done since lockdown. Right, welcome back. I just apologise now, you may hear a little bit of beeping. This is the first time I've managed to do any filming and uh, and I've sat down and just everything's going wrong and there's beeping and things. It's now Monday the 17th. Now that's quite unusual for me, isn't it? Because usually once I've got my video posted, I'm filming straight away, getting ready for the next video, but just things have been happening. And uh, one time I sat down to film in my dungarees, right? And do you remember I was missing a button? And uh, the one side where I'd already got a button missing and I left the bottom one with the one with it missing and while I was waiting for the delivery. And the top one, just come, I sat down and it come flying off and shot across the room. I did manage to find it and I was just going to hammer it in quickly and then come and film. But um, I couldn't find my hammer. Do you know when I showed my hammer in my video, I didn't know where I put it. But what's happened, I just thought, oh, I'll just leave it, I'll leave it. But as it happens, I'd ordered some more. I got these through Amazon, and but they come from the Quilted Bear and there should be a pack of six. I'm sure there must have been six. I've got a hair on my eyelashes. I'm gonna bear with me. Sorry about that. I found it. I went and had a look in the mirror. I got a bit of fluff on my eyelashes. Anyway, yeah, these came through this morning, and I wasn't expecting them until Thursday. So I've uh, I'm, I've had another look in here, and I found my hammer. I've got like a Kallax thing in front of me, and it was on the bottom shelf. And I don't normally put things there. Uh, really, I have got things there, but I don't normally temporarily put things there. So I've hammered these in, and I've gone back over all the other ones and really really I hammer them from the back so I just hope that if I ever went out in them they don't pop off if anything did happen but hopefully fingers crossed I've really bashed the life out of them now and hopefully they stay in now it was all a little bit rushed wasn't it when I last saw you um well you when I last filmed because I just literally got these finished and they wasn't totally finished because I hadn't hemmed them but since I last Last uh, filmed, I went away and I hemmed them. And do you remember I took off uh, three, was it three inches or two inches? I think I took off two and a half inches, didn't I, on the pattern before I cut my fabric out. Well, I was a little bit worried. I might have gone a bit over the bo overboard with how much I cut off. So when you do your hem, you finish your edge and you fold it over by one inch. I finished my hem and I only folded it over by half an inch. And do you know what? I've rolled them down. Now have a look at the photographs actually. One of them, I've got my my dungarees folded down all the way to the bottom as long as they'll go. And then in one of the other photographs, I'd done a little turn up on them. I'd just fold them over twice. And either way, they look. I've left them... Um, like that actually folded over at the moment <laughs> excuse the socks and uh yeah and yeah they're and i like them either way really i can wear them either and i'm five foot four so i'm glad i took that extra little bit off but it probably wouldn't have mattered i probably could have had a big turn up or just locked a bit off after really it wouldn't have mattered all that much now do you remember me saying i couldn't cut my waistband at the front out on the fold so i've been left with a a seam in the center here now if you make this pattern and you do it 
correctly, you won't have a seam on your waistband. You'll have a seam here, you'll have a seam here, but you won't have one there. It's only because I just did my cutting out wrong because I was just, you know, trying to do a bit of, um, cut, they call it um, cutting Tetris. Is that what a term I've heard? Where you're kind of trying to piece things together because you don't have the amount of fabric that it told you you needed in the pattern. So I was kind of playing. It might have been I could have cut it out, but maybe I just, I'd cut other bits out before the waistband and I didn't realise it was probably my mistake. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. Now, regarding how I chose the sizing, um, I went by, I thought the hip is going to be the most important measure measurement on this because obviously even with the bust your bust is out isn't it and it you know you can change the length of these so I didn't think it was going to be massive and I suppose it's worth taking your waist into consideration so I can't remember what I thought about the waist measurement but with my hip measurement I actually fell exactly at the moment I actually fell between two sizes now I was tempted to go with the smaller one because I thought, well, now that we're um, we're going to be getting a bit more active, I'll probably slim down a little bit, you know. Uh, you know, I don't change all that much. I probably only change up and down a couple of inches, you know, kind of thing. But, yeah, so I thought, oh, is it a bit of a dice one? But I thought with dungarees, um, you know, they, they're quite, they can be quite a relaxed fit. But since I've posted my photographs, I have looked at other people's and a lot of people's I've seen look a lot more slimline than mine. But I'm really happy with mine. But I would consider making another pair and going down a size and that would probably be the more what like these are probably a bit more like daytime relax I think they're always going to be daytime aren't they but I think I'd feel a bit more dressy in the more fitted ones you know so but I am really happy with them they're really nice and they're really comfortable but you definitely would have to have some stretch now I'm not saying I think this fabric has got a tiny bit of give, not a lot, but um, so yeah, I think it's definitely worth making them in fabric with a bit of give because it's just going to give you that comfort, isn't it, when you sit down and things. So I'm just wondering if there's anything else now. Uh, yeah, so Tilly and the Buttons patterns, I think, are very good for beginners because she has a booklet. I don't know if you're familiar with. Tilly's patterns. Now I have chatted about this uh, make already so if you want to if there's anything I kind of miss maybe have a look at my last video but it was a bit rushed so I probably haven't missed much but this is the style of path you know booklet you get with Tilly's patterns and she puts like pictures and things in so they, they are good for beginners however um I wouldn't recommend this to the absolute beginner and uh maybe and they're probably not the easiest sort of dungarees to make if you're quite new to them either I know these are my first pair of dungarees well human pair I'm sure I've made them for toys yeah I think I've made them for a, a mouse toy up there and I might have even made them for Polly I can't quite remember now I'm a Polly ragdoll um so I have made dungarees before but a lot of dungarees I've seen they're very much like just the bib the bib piece the straps and the legs but with these you've got waistbands and you've got the inner and the outer so you've got to do things like when you get to the end you're going to be like stitching in the ditch and things like that so and then you've got these button plackets and things so you know some some you can get them that oversized you can just slip into them you can get ones that are a zip on the side maybe you're happier with buttons I don't know um another thing I'd like to say about um these dungarees now if you make some dungarees and then you look at yourself in the mirror and you think oh no that I think I look they make me look a bit big round the hips and things. I must admit, when I stand when I stand in the mirror in the bedroom, I have to stand quite close to it because of the mirrors on the wardrobe and I haven't got the room to stand back from it. It they do when you're standing right up at the mirror. 
it, they do make you look bigger. If you know, if you look down at yourself or big around the hips and things, right? But don't, don't go by how you see yourself in the mirror because just stand back right and get someone to take a photograph of you in it and then you can see it's not how it appears when you stand up against the mirror because i have seen um a youtuber i'm not i'm not gonna name her she doesn't i don't think she does videos anymore bless her but she always had um issues and make and her hips looking bulky but my gosh she's like a supermodel do you know what i'm saying she's she's tall she's slim do you know what i'm saying she has got no worries about her hips right but she was always very conscious but it does make me think was she always looking at herself up in the mirror up close because it's it, you're not going to look the most flattering do you know what i'm saying looking down at your own hip do you know what I'm saying so uh, yeah don't I think don't really judge yourself sometimes from how you look in the mirror stand back have a photograph taken and have a look and see what you look like because I preferred how these looked on my photographs than standing looking in the mirror do you know what I'm saying I felt a bit tweedledee and tweedledum <laughs> in the mirror do you know what I'm saying so uh, yeah that, so yeah, that's all, what I've, that's all I've really got to say, I think, about them at the moment. Um, and I explained about I didn't find a, a placement for the button that I had to, I measured them uh, a five eighths of an inch in this way and this way to put my button placement for the clip. Uh, maybe that's a standard what you do anyway, I don't know. And um, did I have um yeah i think that's all i've got to say really about them yeah <laughs> that's it if there's anything you want to ask that i haven't mentioned about these on my last video or this video then please ask me right now i have been doing some other sewing as well since i last spoke to you and on fr i think it was friday i actually started some hand embroidery do you know um some red work embroidery that you, i know that you've probably seen if you're watching me a while that you know that i like to do that thing and i've got my suitcase here i've had my suitcase in the bedroom the one i take it i haven't done any of this out the house actually i literally have done this in the evening over the last three evenings i've i've stitched this and i've not spent loads of time each time i probably could have gone out, done it over a couple of evenings but i've spread it out over three and here it is it is now you might remember that um dandelion designs mal from dandelion designs telephoned me and she asked me if i could do them a favor the fact they actually lost the pattern for the um the brighton beach bag and they knew that i'd made it and they just wondered if i could scan all the pattern you know all the um instruction pieces and things and uh, email it to them and as a thank you i could choose a hanging heart and um i, I thought oh they're just going to send an island transfer but they actually sent me the kit and I've done the embroidery and I chose the happy birthday one I haven't pressed this or anything yet and that's what I've just finished stitching now what you do with these have I got any of them here oh, I'm gonna I've got some here go with me I've got <laughs> I've got pattern pieces here um if i'd have had to take all the pattern what is this oh it's the marlow what i've done is i've not folded my marlow pieces up i've just hung them on one of these ikea hooks look it looks like a butcher's meat hook doesn't it just so um because i plan to make one pretty soon well i haven't got the fabric i haven't got any suitable fabric to make one but if anything any fabric arises on my travels i'm going to make another one and that's what's on the back look so these are the hanging hearts that's an i love red work one and keep calm and sew so i've made a number of them i've showed you them before but that <laughs> they were uh, they're getting covered at the moment these ones by my marlow sweater so yeah so the reason um I just thought it's another nice thing to get out. It's people's birthdays. And it's my husband's birthday on Thursday. That's why I was a little bit worried about if I was going to get a video out to you. Because I didn't know if I'd have time. So I don't know how much filming I'm going to get 
done this week but um but yeah i'm gonna be stitching this up if i can find all the bits are they in here yeah oh good yeah all the bits i need to finish it are in here apart from the stuffing which is upstairs and i usually wad mine first um before I, I don't just stuff it i wad it as well but mandy doesn't tell you and i do mine slightly different i do a seam down the back but mandy doesn't do that she cuts a hole and then stitches it up and puts a ribbon over it but i don't do that so um so yeah i'll be doing that this week and hopefully i hope to get that done uh in time for thursday when it's my husband's birthday not that he's going to be overly fussed is he over a happy birthday heart but it's another nice thing to hang up and then and um, five days after, it's um, our eldest son's 18th birthday. So that's crazy, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't quite believe it. Anyway, I have fin finished something else as well. Now, that I was going to show you a part of the way through this project, but I didn't end up filming, but I've ended up finishing it. Now, do you remember me saying to you that I've joined the um, Crafty Gemini um, Bag Club, 7th edition, it's called. And um, so, and the bag is called the, it's spelt like joy and an A, but it's pronounced Hoya. And I showed you a photograph of this bag last week. Now, this is Vanessa's bag. This is um, her example. And it's all made up in quilting cottons. Now, loads of people have been posting their bags in the private Facebook group. but um, And I posted mine in there yesterday. So I haven't posted a photograph at this current moment in time on social media. Because I'll, uh, I like to, ideally, I like to, show people in my videos things first give you a chance to watch my video and then i start occasionally i post things before the video goes up but i like to keep some things back now you saw a little bit of prep of this where i were last time where i was i drew out a balloon i had an eye i was going to have it kind of diagonal oh, i'm going to drop in something i want to show you here uh diagonal i kind of wish i'd done that now because the way it's ended up it's ended up right at the bottom of the bag but i don't mind too much and i was going to write sackle pan which means bread bag in english but in french uh but then in the end i decided i'm just keeping it english and um because then i thought about having fr uh, fresh bread in french which was pan foie but i just ended up sticking to good old english and writing uh, let's put that there a moment fresh bread even free motion embroidery and here it is I've, i'm really pleased how this has turned out actually so there's my free motion bloomer and uh and my writing on it and uh on with that blue i showed you this fabric it's like a a canvas fabric and i've used like a cotton ticking inside and how it goes it's like this look it's got this drawstring so it, in what it's meant to be like you've got this bag that you can take out i'm not using mine for taking out i'm using it for bread right and then if you end up filling up your bag you can really then overfill your bag look so it'd be good for like a sports bag or lunch bag or anything wouldn't it really but um so yeah that's what it looks like now you were supposed to use t-shirt that is doesn't want to stay does it t-shirt yarn for or you could cut up an old digit to make your drawstrings i use shoelaces just two cream shoelaces like that look and uh, and this is a lot heavier weight than what was recommended you're meant to use like a light weight and thing uh, i do think i wasn't keen because we use this that's what i want to show is it is yeah now i showed you in the last video this fusible batting which means wadding in england and i've never used fusible batting fusible wadding before i've used like um like a polyester kind of thing with fusible on it i think they class it as fusible fleece that product i don't know see how it's fleece but i don't know that's how it's been worded but um yeah it wouldn't fuse i don't know if i wasn't doing it right i tried it with steam maybe i just was i was a bit worried about the iron because i was thinking this feels like polyester let me have a look what's in it actually it says to use a damp press cloth on a low iron for 10 to 12 seconds but it just 
it just wouldn't seem to fuse. I mean, it's a hundred percent polyester, so I think that's why I was being really careful because I didn't want it to melt under my iron. But it wouldn't fuse. But I ended up just basting it in, and it was okay anyway. Now in the handles, we used um, fashion fuse. Right, I don't because of uh, me using this ticking fabric. I probably didn't need any kind of interfacing. And uh, so, oh, actually, I've got a piece of the fusible batting here. And it does look, look, that's the glue side. It does look like, do you know, like if you buy an, like a cheap felt? I'm not saying this is a cheap product, but do you know, like if you were going to do a nice thing in felt, but you buy like an acrylic one, it's not the best of quality. I'm not saying, this is perfect quality for inside something but you know if it was a visible thing i don't think i'd be that keen on using it so that's what that looks like um so i just thought you might be interested in seeing that so i know somebody i'm really sorry i can't remember who mentioned it now said you'd never seen fusible wadding before um and they were going to try it but I didn't have much success with it. Normally when I'm doing quilts, I'll um, spray um, like a spray on my, like a 501, I think it's called, like a spray on my, like, is it a temp, like a temporary fabric spray on my wadding, not on the fabric, and then I'll kind of smooth it over. Now I've used inside, you're meant to use again quilting cotton and you're meant to interface it. I think you're meant to, be inter to interface it with you were meant to yeah you were meant to interface your lining fabric with fashion views in this project but i was using this for my lining and it's a food safe wipeable lining now please please don't ask me what it is exactly i think it's like a pul product i think because i bought this from poppy to fry um in an embroidery club um when i was in the embroidery club and she had it as a one-off thing for a project and then never sold it again so i've never bought it anywhere before or bought it since but it's just what i've got left over from the um the bee sandwich wrap i made in the club so and luckily i had enough so i'll give you a little glimpse of that inside can you see that so i was tempted to also do it on this bit but i wasn't sure entirely sure how that was going to work because you're going to be doing this with it so yeah i'm i'm really delighted with this bag sorry there's a few bits of fluffy bits on here and uh, yeah i re i really love it and i'm going to uh put bread in it in my kitchen you know and i was tempted not to put the handles on it actually because it's going to be on the side but actually at least i've got the option then and then if i did decide i don't want to use it as a bread bag I've got a nice bag, haven't I? So I've really enjoyed doing that. And actually, before I'd even finished that bag, I've actually started sketching what I'm going to do on the next bag. So these bags, you just make them in quilting cotton. There's no pictures on them. But the ones that I think caught, cool, they've got a good space to do a picture or any writing for free motion. That's what I'm doing. So, um, yes, yeah, so I have started designing the next one. Um, well, I can tell you what it is is uh i'm basically i'm um i'm drawing a bike so like an old-fashioned car you know like a traditional bike because this bag actually i'll show you a photograph of it sorry i can't remember the name of this next bag we, we're going to get the um the pattern on saturday we are so um you, it's not going to be this week that you're going to see this bag um so i'll pop it oh, hopefully you've seen a photo it's a basically like a concertina um square kind of fronted crossbody bag and it really shouted out put a picture on me and now i'm thinking of having a bike on it so if i ever go out on a bike um, i do it very often it probably happens about once a year <laughs> um i have a nice little bag a crossbody bag with a bike on it i think i'll really like that so that is my plan with that so um the immediate plans at the moment with sewing 
um, is just basically finishing the hanging heart. Um, I haven't actually planned what I'm going to make yet. Um, I think I'm going to think about um, dressmaking. Um, I might make myself a little another little dress a t-shirt dress or something just in case i need something else for the weekend you know with my husband's birthday being this week and then he might want to do something so yeah maybe i'll knock up a little dress or something maybe if i have a proper date night i'll put that dress i designed for the frugal frock maybe i'll wear that that'd be nice wouldn't it but um but say if we're just do, doing something a bit more relaxed like going around the neighbors i might knock up another sunny day dress um to wear because i have got some fabric um some jersey that I'm, wasn't entirely i love the quality of it but i don't know if the color's really me but um but I might use that. It's from the So Hayley Jane box I had some time ago. So I might make a sunny day, a uh, sunny dress. I keep saying sunny day, sunny dress in that fabric this week. But I'm not entirely sure. Now this is that bag of stuff I've got to make some of the up and coming bags. And now what I use in the handle was this fashion fuse, which I did show you. Now I'll show you a sample of it. Have I got a sample out? Ooh, oh, there it is. This is fusible as well, so you can feel the fusibles. It basically, it looks woven. It looks like a very lightweight woven kind of muslin kind of fabric or cheesecloth kind of thing, doesn't it? Very thin with a fusible on it, but it just gives um, the fabric a bit more body. I don't think I really needed it with that ticking, but I suppose it gave it a little bit more stability, but it was making it quite hard to iron in my creases, um, you know, without, you know, using any like basting or anything, but I, I just kind of winged it anyway. But, um, but yeah, Vanessa does explain ways of getting around that, but I chose not to do that anyway. I just kind of like eyeballed everything you know so um yeah so yeah i hope you like what you've seen so far and uh did i um hopefully i'll pop some did i pop some photographs up yeah i presume i would have put, put my photographs up of my dungarees during this video when i was talking about them i know i didn't mention photographs these are my shoelaces that i got so i did tell you where i bought these sorry i'm dropping them everywhere uh I did tell you where I bought these when I bought them. I can't quite remember. They could be eBay or Amazon or something. So, yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. So, I'm going to continue designing my bike, my sketch. And I'm going to be working on the hanging heart. And possibly some dressmaking. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself this week. Because it's my husband's birthday. And obviously it's his birthday Thursday. Then we're going to be doing things a weekend. And uh, oh, and what? And the reasons I have, I'm not filming till now. Things that have gone on. Is Saturday, uh, I've got a very last minute email to say. My ukulele group were meeting up again. For the first time in a year. Saturday. So I went to ukulele practice Saturday morning. And I got some new music so I've got to practice my new music and uh and my husband said oh do you know while you're at ukulele I might go to the gym and we haven't been back to the gym since it's reopened and I said oh I'd quite like to go so we hung on so I went to ukulele in my gym wear with my ukulele jacket on top and uh and then I got back and we went to the gym and, at, and after lunch we crashed we actually had to go to bed we felt awful because it's the first time we've been to the gym and then uh Sunday we went um tubing do you know when you go down a ski sl uh, slope we go we've got like a dry um slope ski slope about 20 minutes away from here it's in Birmingham uh you can go down on rubber rings so we went with the family and went and did that but you have to walk up the hill to go down every time and it's exhausting so yeah we've been really really busy so that that's where I'm at at the moment so anyway so thank you for joining me so far and I'll see you in the next week
Right, welcome back. It's now Tuesday the 18th of May and uh, I just thought I'd nip on. I wasn't planning on filming this morning. I'm actually, I'm going out to Ikea with my husband because our son is broken his charger and so we're going to get a charger and you know like we just need to replace a few bits here and there and we've not been obviously with you know everything that's happened so I'm, I'm quite excited actually about going. This is a bit sad isn't it? But anyway so I thought I'd the reason I've decided to film now is because I've had a delivery and I really, really want to open it and I wanted to do it on film, but I don't think I can uh, wait. So I'm just going to do the other bits now as well. Well, I've actually cut out a dress now. I've cut out another sunny dress, not sunny day, sunny dress by the Friday Pass and Company. And it's in this jersey. Now, it's absolutely gorgeous, right? And I'm going to look really contradictory now, but... I don't really, I love mustard, right? But I don't really like it on me. Do you know, I just, I'm trying to wear it, but I don't know if it's my colour. But I got this in the So Hayley Jane box. So I'm not a subscriber anymore, but I was for about 14 or 15 months, or 16, somewhere between there. And this was the only jersey I received while I was in the club. And, um, and it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. But I just don't know if it's my colour. But I'll just let you know what I'm going to use it. So, and I know I really like the sunny dress. So, and I've made them in stripes before. So, yeah, it's all cut out here, ready to go. So, I'll look forward to seeing that. I should think that will be completed for this Friday. So, definitely, uh, I know I shouldn't say definitely, but if I'm this far on by Tuesday, it's looking hopeful, isn't it? And if it wasn't going to Ikea today, I probably would have sewn it today. So, I'll just pop that fabric aside. So, I don't know, um, you know, much about this jersey because I can't really remember because I didn't purchase it myself. But I did manage to finish my embroidery last night. Now, I showed you yesterday the completed embroidery and I do have to do a little bit more embroidery once it's pieced together which I've done and here it is it's the happy birthday heart the one that I received from um dandelion designs for helping them out uh, i actually got a, th a letter from them saying i i saved the day at dandelion designs Just remember i was all chuffed about it so yeah this is that's how i do mine at the back i do a center seam and uh, and i don't have the ribbon hanging down at the back like what mandy has i have done that but um but this is how i generally like to do them and i get leftover ribbon as well from it then that i get to save so um yeah it's my husband's birthday thursday so i'm going to be putting that up hanging it in my home so yeah i'm really excited now the um the delivery i've had I think it's Mandy Shaw, Secret Society, right? And it's in this bag. Normally, we get spotty bags, but maybe it's a bit bigger. That's why it's come this. And I've checked the um, the address where it's come from, so I know. I know. So that's why I haven't ripped it open, because I thought I want to open it and film it. So, uh, yeah, I've got some scissors ready, just in case I need them. I don't know if you've noticed if you're on social media a lot of people posting what they're wearing every day and it's, it's something a lot of people follow called me made may now um I've never done me made may no I probably should because I have wore homemade every single day in the month of May um I, I mainly wear my homemade like today I've got a old shop bought t-shirt and shop bought like jeans but I've got my cardigan on so I, I'm always in something me made throughout the day but yeah I just can't be bothered to be ta having a photograph taken every single day I just think it would it would feel like a chore more than fun you know with I'm a bit like a spontaneous kind of person and I'm like yeah um I like it I don't want a bit of pressure but not too much pressure <laughs> oh right I can see my newsletter now I don't want to read it first because i'd like to open things because it tells you exactly what you've got but it does give you a sneaky peek of the block this month it looks a bit squat doesn't it this one it's wider and shorter than all the others that we've had and i can see there's a recipe on the back already but i'll have a look at that book in a moment right i think i know what it is i can feel what it is 
I think I can feel what it is. And I think I'm really excited about it. Right. Okay, yeah, that, that's empty. Right. Well, there's a bag of our organish English breakfast tea. Well, I'll be giving that to one of my family because I don't drink tea, like, you know, regular tea. Maybe my eldest. I think he's the only one that drinks tea. Oh, no, the youngest, he drinks tea. Yeah, maybe my youngest or my eldest, whoever gets there first. Oh, now, I love these. And it's funny, my husband brought a whole packet of them, a big pack. And we've finished them and we haven't replaced them. We finished them this week. So I've got another one now. Oh, that's nice. I'll be having that in a moment. Oh, look. We've got a badge. And it says Secret Society member 2020 to 2021. I love it. I love my pin badges. Oh, thank you so much, man. Like, I don't know if Mandy watches my videos, but you know, do a thank you out there every now and then. Oh, thank you, Mandy. I love it. <laughs> and I know I love this now. I can tell it's a mug, right? And I love a craft mug. And obviously, I love Mandy. And I've always wanted an enamel one, right? Do you know, like an enamel mug, like the old style? And I think it's an enamel one. Do you know when you can feel the little lip on it? <gasps> Look! <laughs> oh gosh, I love it. Secret Society of Red Work and Citry and Crafty Loveliness. Oh, Mandy. I really love it. Is it an enamel one? Or is it croc? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it looks like that style, you know, like the old style enamel mugs. I wonder if, I probably won't put it in the dishwasher. Maybe Mandy will say if we can or not. Oh, I love it. Right, let's have a look in the book. Oh gosh, I've got fluff now. It's when I come in here, isn't it? Right, there's a big long paragraph about Welcome to May. Maybe when I've read this, I'll come back maybe another day and tell you a bit more. And then there's 10 top thimble facts, right? I don't know a lot about thimble, the history of the thimble. So that will be interesting. And I'll pop that. There's, right, I'll tell you what. There's this and there's this in the middle. So this is going to be the iron-on transfer. Uh, it is quite big, look. That's the iron on transfer for red work. Now, oh, it's lovely. I can see through this because of the light. And uh, and I can see the maypole with the little girls. And I was absolutely obsessed with that when I was a little girl, the maypole. And, uh, and I just dreamed of dancing around them. But I know they still do it in parts of the UK, but they, um, they don't do it here. Not not that not around here, not that I've seen. And uh, yeah, I can see a fire. I can see the mug. There's a mug there, look. I can see it looks... Uh, oh, it's a Morris dancer. Yeah, we do get Morris dancers in my town. I've actually shared a video of them before, but I don't know if I shared it on YouTube. Uh, and I can't make Jack in the Green. I don't know much about Jack in the Green. I've not heard of him. Mayday here. And lots of plants and things and cow parsley. So that's lovely, isn't it? That's really nice. Put that aside. Now, the centre page has lots of pictures. Look, so the thimbles here. And there's a pic, oh God, there's a picture of the Morris dancers here, look. And some bluebells. And the re recipe on the back is some ginger nuts, because I, I got a sneaky peek at that. Oh, 
are. So Mandy's giving us a download this month for the thimble pattern. Now I have got the thimble pattern already, uh, but actually when Mandy uh, was on Create and Craft the other day, she had a book that I've already got and I saw a sneaky peek of the thimbles because I've already seen it because I've got the book. It's an old book, but um, I think oh, I'd love to stitch those someday, but that's the download that we're getting this month. So that's nice. And it, and then Mandy tells you about her inspiration for block 12. And it tells us all our login details and everything for the website. And, uh, and it says, yeah, it is enamel. It is an enamel mug. So enamel secret society mug for tea, coffee and hot chocolate, but also idea for popping in pens and pencils. Wow, it's funny Mandy says that because you know the one I bought? This one, I showed you fairly recently. I've ended up keeping bits and bobs in it, look, and not using it for drink. So, but maybe this is a really good sized drink one. Maybe I'll swap it around for one of the smaller ones. But uh, yeah, I'm so excited, right? Sorry, I thought you were thinking why you're getting so excited, but you know, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, and uh, what else? And that's it, yeah. And that's lovely. So that is our final Secret Society for the 2020 to 2021. And it's been really very enjoyable. Um, I think there are still some spaces left for uh, next year. And I have rejoined. So we get priority booking. And I did say in my last video that anybody can join from the 14th. And I saw a, po a post last night saying there's still some availability. By the time this video goes up on Friday, I don't know if there'll be any spaces left because it normally sells out in about a week. But um, if you're, I know some of my viewers uh, have actually managed to join, which I'm really happy about. So if any of my viewers have joined and you've got into the Facebook group, can you just give me a little tag and, and to say, you know, so I know who you are, so it just jog my memory, because that would be really lovely, Thank, I'd really appreciate that, thank you, so anyway, I'm going to go now, because Ikea opens at 10, and it's actually 20 to 11 now, and obviously we have to think about um, school runs and things, so thank you so much for joining me uh, today, and I'll be back soon, so I'll see you in the next bit, bye! Now, welcome back to the final part of my Friday sews. It is now Thursday, so you may have noticed if you've been looking at the days of the week on the video, I didn't record anything yesterday, and uh, there was a reason for that. Well, I did end up um, actually, do you know, I said I was going to Ikea when I last saw you, and I did end up sewing that evening, so I actually managed to finish my dress off on the, that evening. And yesterday, uh, I did manage to photograph it, so I'll show you my dress and my photographs in a moment and if you may notice I'm actually wearing my most my um my second sunny dress uh this is the one that what happened is it ended up a bit a bit more fitted which I quite like but what it is when I didn't like the length how long my first one was I shortened the length of the pattern pieces and then this one has ended up too short so what I've decided to do I've had a look at what I've got left of this fabric I'm actually going to remake this dress because uh, I've actually lengthened my pattern pieces again now so they're not as long as the original ones but they are shorter so I'm going to remake this dress and I'm going to actually turn this one into a top because um, this pattern, there's a, you can have a straight dress, which I've made the straight dress three times now. You can have a curved hem dress and you can have a curved hem top. So I'm actually going to turn this one that I'm wearing now. It's really short, right? Look, it's just, it's just far too short. It is this dress. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a top. So, uh, yeah, and I think I'll be a lot happier then. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure maybe I'll, I'll kind of, um, you know, be a bit more uh, forgiving with the seams. It's just not quite as fitted. I don't mind. I think the fittedness, I think. I think it's just how short it is. I think that's the problem, really. So, anyway, right, what has been happening? So, I went to Ikea 
Um, I've got a new IKEA cup actually. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have a sip actually. Oh, that's nice. It's freshly brewed. It's nice and warm. Um, yeah, and the reason I got a couple of these see through ones because I want to make some fancy coffees, you know, with the uh, coffee machine my mum and dad gave me that I showed you last week. Uh, I want to do like a ruby cappuccino. And it's only going to be worthwhile if you can actually see it. So I just thought these, a couple of these cups would be quite nice. Anyway, I picked something up and then my husband said, I'll get that for you. And and this is what he bought, right? And it's a throw. It's like a knitted style throw. And uh, and how big is it? It's like a dusky pink. And you can tumble dry it and wash it at 30. And it did... It doesn't have those, does it? Oh, yes, it is. In centimetres, it's 130 centimetres by 170 centimetres. A rectangle shape. And in inches, it's 51 times 67 inches. Now, um, I'm going to make something. It's a throw, but I'm going to make a garment out of it. And it's a lovely treat from my husband. So so that's nice, isn't it? So I look forward to making that. Um I, I am thinking about an, another dressmaking project, uh, so I'm not exact. Uh, I've got an idea for something I really want to make, but it just depends if I can get some fabric. So I'm not going to mention it yet, just in case I can't get the fabric. But if I can't get anything, maybe I'll work on, re you know, redoing this dress and turning it into a top, and I'll let you know what the top's like. And um, what I'll probably do is just do it the length it's supposed to be. Just lay the pattern piece on the top piece. Would have to trace it. So I don't really want to cut my dress one. So I just have to retrace the top pieces so I then I know the length. So that would be exciting, won't it? So, uh, uh, yeah, I've done quite a lot, haven't I, this week, actually. I'm really pleased. So I've... Um, from, since Friday I did that hand embroidery and I've actually completed it into the happy birthday heart and I've hung that this morning it's my husband's birthday today so I've been really busy so yesterday oh gosh yeah that, that's one of the reasons I didn't film yesterday um so I was doing things like a photograph my new dress that I'm going to show you in a bit um I actually went to Pilates at the gym the classes are back on so I went to Pilates and when I got back um there was a big truck broccoli my drive and uh, my neighbor it was to do my neighbour and he said oh it's only going to be for two hours and um it ended up being like way past dinner time on the night so nobody could get on the drive and there was just nowhere to park it either so I attempted to go into the local shops and there was nowhere to park down there so oh gosh it was a bit of a nightmare so I ended up parking in private grounds there's um this private area across the road from me and I, par I parked there and in hope you know to get shot <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't really get shot but yeah I parked in private ground and uh yeah so I just had to to leave it there uh, and it's a good job really I didn't get blocked in because I wouldn't have been able to get my son from school that would have been a bit of a nightmare wouldn't it so yeah it was just one of those days and then I was writing um you know my husband's birthday card and you know I just don't do any old writing I do calligraphy those and then I have to sort my getting the boys doing my husband's card and I went and bought my husband a cake and so yeah I was doing a load of birthday prep and everything yesterday so with everything going on with that truck and everything blocking the drive I just didn't get into film but never mind I can finalise it all today anyway. So I'm just thinking, are there any last minute things? So, um, going, oh, so the Crafty Gemini Bag Club. Now, you saw my bag, haven't you, this week? And I made the bread bag. I look, it looks a bit in shadow, doesn't it? I think, uh, I've got a few things blocking between the lamp blocking so yeah I made I made this bag didn't I so you've seen that already but we're going to be getting the new bag Saturday but obviously with my husband's birthday being today he's probably going to want to celebrate his birthday the weekend our son's birthday is on the Tuesday so He's 18th, so he might want to celebrate this weekend. And we've had trouble booking anywhere to eat. And it's still only groups of six, unfortunately. So it's not like I can go out with my parents and all the family. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a nightmare. And then the weekend after is my father-in-law's birthday. And they're inviting us to the house. So we've got to really celebrate, cram my husband's and my son's 18th, really, this weekend. Because then my father-in-law is doing next weekend. And 
either they've left it up in the air, they don't know which day they're doing it, they're going to let us know, depending on the weather. So it's not like, <laughs> yeah, so it's all a bit too crap. I really wish there wasn't so many birthdays in a short space of time. And then it's my dad's birthday in the first few days of June as well. So yeah, there's a lot going on. So with my dad's birthday, we might have to just go out for something to eat with mum and dad and not be able to take the boys because we can't go out as a seven, which is unfortunate. So yeah, so there's a lot going on at the moment. So I'm really quite proud. I've actually made three things this week. So, uh, but you'll probably find there might be one week a lot of things come together. Maybe next week I might not have as much to show you. I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to show you my dress. Now I showed you the fabric in this video. And obviously you've seen this dress now two times before. And obviously I'm wearing one. But this is my most recent one and it's turned out beautiful, hasn't it? And um, my husband hasn't seen it on and it's so soft, it is. And uh, my husband hasn't seen it on, but I showed him the photograph that I've taken. I just basically, I've done a collage of kind of the front and kind of the back and side kind of thing. Now, I didn't bother pattern matching with this. Uh, I don't, I, I know it's quite a bold print. Right, but if you see the seam, I think it's quite forgiving, really. Like, I did try and think about placement of my flowers. I tried not to make sure, like, I'd got one, like, right on my nipple or something. And, yeah, I tried to, you know, do a, a nice big centrepiece down the back here and things. So... Yeah, so I did, I did, I was mindful about the pattern, but I didn't try to match up the flowers on the side. Because then, because I've got all this, because it's, I think it's quite forgiving, I've got all this fabric left to do more with, other not I? So, um, yeah, so, and what I'll do is I'll pop uh, the photograph, I've done like a two-piece photograph, I'll pop that up on the screen for you to see. So, uh, and that's my new pattern piece now, that's uh, the length, I didn't take anything off at the end. That's how it ended up. So when I redo this one now, that's the pattern piece I'm going to use. And then I'll, um, and obviously I'll have to retrace to turn this one into a top. So maybe on holiday, um, in the daytime, this probably would be okay. But I just think I'm going to get a little bit more wear out of it. If it's just, even if it was just an inch longer, it would just make all the difference, which is really nice. So yeah, I think I'm going to finalise this video now. Um, I really hope I'll have a video to bring to you next week. Uh, there's no way not, you know, there's going to be a whole week with me not doing any sewing because I do usually some a little something every day well I try to anyway so um so thank you so much for joining me in my uh, craft uh, my crafty week and uh, I really hope to see you uh, next week and bring you another video of some more antics so thank you so much for joining me this week and I'll see you next week bye <music>